Good morning, Saints. In Pursuit of a Purpose, Part 2, we looked at our first uh, message in this series last Sunday, and we're going to have one more uh, this next Sunday because uh, I find it difficult to get out of this one verse of Scripture uh, that God uh, has for us uh, in these lessons. Our scripture reading is now set your heart and soul to seek the Lord your God. Let's pray. Gracious Father, thank you for these moments that we can spend with you contemplating uh, your purpose uh, in our lives with your son and dwelling in your presence of your spirit this day uh, in this time of praise. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your truth, the abundance of your love, the majesty of your glory, the greatness of your grace. Take your word this day and change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ is why we are here. Christ is the one we are seeking. Christ is the reason we have gathered. And Christ is the purpose that we have assembled for. This morning, we are a people in pursuit of a purpose. That's what David told his son. Now set your heart and soul to seek the Lord your God. We are a people pursuing God. We are people running after our Savior. We are people chasing after God's best. We are God's chasers. I once heard a sermon entitled this, God Chasers. But unfortunately, the preacher took a verse out of context to pursue his topic. But this day, we are that people. Because we're, talking, we're taking nothing out of context in what we are seeking since the word seek in our text pictures this to us in the Hebrew, it means to pursue something with our heart and soul and that something is our master's will. And the word seek also means to chase after someone and that someone is Christ. Beautiful picture because in Psalms 23 it speaks of you and I chasing after God and uh, or God chasing after us, I should say. And here we see uh, us chasing after God. And you know something, when we do that, we're going to meet. <laughs> and that's beautiful indeed. Our Lord's purpose for our lives is seen right here in the words arise and build. And I invite your attention again to 2 Chronicles 22, verse number 19, where we find these words of David to his son. Arise and build. But what are we to be building? We 
We are to be building up those around us. We're to build others up in a world that tears them down. I'm, I said Second Chronicles. I mean First Chronicles, sweet people. Another typo. Now set your heart and soul to seek the Lord your God. Rise, therefore, and build. Are we on the same page now, finally? <laughs> but what are we to be building? We're to be building up those around us. We're to build others up in a world that tears them down. We're to build up hearts and souls of those our lives touch. Where David told Solomon his son this, Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God. So the place where this building is to take place is in God's sanctuary. So if we are in search of a purpose, here it is. You see, David had in his heart a desire to build a permanent sanctuary of worship for God. Because what was taking place before that uh, was that God had no permanent sanctuary because uh, the tabernacle in the Old Testament was kind of a, a mobile worship center because God's people were wandering in their life. Uh, without focus and um, and that's sad because a lot of us wander through life without a purpose at least a godly one so David had in his heart to build the temple and of course God told David that his hands were too bloody uh, he had been a man of war uh, a soldier king to be sure uh, and uh, uh, but his son would be allowed to take on that project, and this is where we find our text and our setting here in, in this hour. If we're to be building God's sanctuary, then the challenge of the hour the challenge of this hour the challenge today will be the same challenge tomorrow, and it will be the challenge this day, this year, next year, and every year for the rest of our lives. It's to rise up and build a house for God, God's house. Last Sunday, we looked at what and who we are pursuing. And now in this worship hour, we will consider what our purpose in all of this is. So our first order of business is to pursue our relationship with the Lord. That's number one. That's your challenge. And you're to meet that with God. You're to seek God and seek an intimate relationship with Him in your lives and everyday living. And the second is to capture what our purpose is for being. Because we're either getting closer to God or we're moving further away from him. Remember what we determined last Sunday concerning the two greatest days of our lives? It is when we were saved, and it's when we finally figure out why we have been saved. Those are the two greatest days your life. The Apostle Paul summed this up when he said, understanding what the will of the Lord is in Ephesians 5, 17. And again, it was Paul who told Timothy what the first part of his will is when he said, who will have all men to be saved. That's God's will. And the second part of that passage of Scripture is this, and come to the knowledge of truth. Find that, 2 Timothy 2.4. 
The knowledge of truth here means to fully experience it. And where we come to fully experience and embrace his truth is in the scriptures and in his sanctuary. Amen. So we're talking about pursuing God's purpose. And we're beginning to see what that purpose is. Remember it was Solomon who declared this to us in Ecclesiastes 3. To everything there is a season. And a time for every purpose under heaven. And David told his son Solomon. The time is now. And here God includes us in our life experience because there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven in our lives. And here God includes us in that life experience when he says, Then said I in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, the rebellious, for there is a time for every purpose and for every work. And that moment for us is now. The time had come for Solomon to arise and build. And likewise, the time has come for us as well. The purpose is to arise and the work is to build. The words arise and build are in the imperative in the Hebrew. Which conveys the need is critical Essential, urgent, and intense. Hmm. God wants you to rise up and stand up. He wants our lives to stand for something. And build up here means God wants you to be occupied in his building project. <laughs> he wants you to be actively involved in the building up of his sanctuary. But here's the thing, we live in a non-committal age, don't we? Because people are afraid of anything that requires any real commitment. Where God is looked upon as being irrelevant and mainly insignificant in people's lives. Where godly pursuits are of little consequence and relevance. And here's the rub. As we are affecting our world with Christ, is this what we're doing? Are we doing it? Or is our culture influencing our attitudes more than God? You think about that in your life because what are your priorities? Is it to build up his sanctuary? Or are you pursuing other building projects in your life other than his? The travesty in all of this is when the world around us shapes the way we think and live more than God does. Turn with me to Psalm 71. Psalm 71 I invite your attention momentarily to verse number 13, Psalm 77. And this is what is so disturbing to me because God hardly gets an honorable mention in our country and nation. And our church relationship with God in His church no longer makes any real impact on us, so it makes no real impact. On those our lives come into contact with. But if you're saved, the Lord's church and your ministry in his sanctuary is to hold the utmost priority in our hearts. Psalm 77, verse number 13. Sanctuary is the key. We're going to key on this word sanctuary for a few moments. We're going to determine what the sanctuary of the Lord is today. Thy way. O oh God, 
So what are you pursuing in your life? Your way? Or is it God's way? Because God's way here, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. And who is so great a God as our God? And we sang about his greatness this morning. So how great is your God? Is he great enough in your heart to pursue? That's what the word seek meant in 1 Chronicles 22. Matter of fact, the word seek is used well over a thousand times in the Old Testament. And it pictures that. Is his will in your life important enough to pursue? Is his purpose in your soul worth chasing after? Again, that word seek implies this, pictures this. Because his way, his will, his path, and therefore his purpose for our lives begins and ends right here in his sanctuary. So what does his sanctuary look like today? Because I can tell you his sanctuary is not what you say it is, but it's what he says it is. His will is not what you determine it is. It is what he says it is. His purpose is not what you think it is. It is what he says it is. And here it is in his sanctuary. Not just visiting his sanctuary, but in his sanctuary. And God places great importance on his sanctuary. In fact, the word sanctuary is mentioned 133 times in the Old Testament. His sanctuary then was a place in which he was to be worshipped. His sanctuary was a place in which he was to be honored. His sanctuary was a place where he was, his glory dwelt. I want you to just listen to a few verses about God's sanctuary. And we don't have to leave the book of Psalms to do that. Psalms 20, verse number 2. If you want to flip ahead, you can. If you want to just listen, listen. David prays this, send help from the sanctuary. Strengthen thee out of Zion. So God's help and strength emanates from his sanctuary. Psalm 63, verse number 2. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Isn't that a beautiful verse of scripture? You want to see God? You want to embrace his power? You want to experience his glory? Because it's in his sanctuary. You will discover that sort of of intimacy with God. Finish this verse, even thy goings of my God, my King in the sanctuary. Do you want to go where your king is leading. Because it's here in his sanctuary you will discover his direction for you in your life. Psalms 96, verse number 6. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Every time we come into his sanctuary, it is an honor. It's an honor to me because I'm in the presence 
of God. I'm in the presence of His Spirit. Every time we assemble here, it is a place filled with His majesty. Every time we congregate, we can find strength. And every time we worship, we discover how truly beautiful our Savior is. And you find that beauty in your life, in the sanctuary, in it, not out of it. Psalms 150, verse number 1. Still with me, I hope you are. It's all about the sanctuary this morning. We've got to determine exactly what that sanctuary is. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary, in the firmament of His power. If you want to praise your Savior and exalt Him that is here in the sanctuary, we will do it. If you want to know His power in your life, the very foundation of it is discovered here in His sanctuary. So God's sanctuary is not something to be indifferent about in our lives. Because your relationship with your Lord in His sanctuary is determined by it. God's sanctuary is pictured in His tabernacle and temple in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, it is discovered, guess where? In His church. Paul says this in the book of Ephesians, unto Him be glory. In the church. In the church, not outside of it. By Christ Jesus. How? Through Christ Jesus. How long? Throughout all ages, from one generation into each succeeding one. God's plan, God's purpose does not change. How long will this plan and purpose then last? World without and unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Isn't that a great passage of scripture? Well, they're really all great, aren't they? I was once surrounded by preachers and, and one pastor asked this question of another. He said, what's your favorite book of the Bible? And without batting an eye, he said Leviticus. And everybody kind of went, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you see, he loved the tabernacle. He loved the temple. He loved the priesthood ministry. He loved all the Hebrew pictures of it in the book of Leviticus. <laughs> Amen. So is this our heart's desire? Is this our soul's pursuit? His sanctuary is not any sanctuary. It is his church. And it's not what you say it is. It is what he declares. She is. I've heard the rebellious all my life say this. Well, preacher, I can worship on the mountain. Well, preacher, I can worship God with a fly rod in my hand, fishing. Preacher, I can worship God on a rugby pitch. Funny that these are all guys saying this, isn't it? Is that, is that kind of an indication of who we are, guys? Bunch of rebellious hoots is who we are. <laughs> huh. You can't worship God on the mountain. 
you're not going to worship God with a fishing pole in your hand. You're not going to worship God, certainly, on a rugby pitch or the beer or grog in your hand in front of a TV set that's not worshiping God. You can. This morning we know the difference. We all realize the church is not some outward exterior of some erected building like this one. So if it's not something physical and outward, it must be something internal and spiritual. It must be something going on in our hearts and our souls. And that's to seek the Lord, our God, in His sanctuary. And the building up of His sanctuary is yet to be finished. So the church in any given locality is not made up of concrete and plaster, Therefore, the spiritual fabrication of our Lord's church then is made up of hearts and souls seeking Him. It's made up of people who are committed. It is never made up of the non-committal. David asked God's people this question in 2 Chronicles 29 and verse number 5. He asked this question, Who is willing to consecrate his service unto the Lord God. So how willing are we to pursue his purpose in our lives? How willing are we to chase after God's best in our lives? And where is all of this going to come to a conclusion? It's in the sanctuary. That's where we embrace God and His greatness. This is the place we come to chase after God, if that's what you want to do. So what is the sanctuary of God? It's made up of lives pursuing God's best. It's made up of souls pursuing our saviors. It's made up of hearts like yours and mine. Hearts that are not perfect. Hearts with hurts, indeed. Hearts with cracks in them needing repair. To be sure, hearts who have a burning desire to get closer to Jesus. Hearts who want to love Jesus. Hearts who are committed to honor and glorify Jesus. Hearts are pursuing, who are pursuing God's best. And God's best for our lives is to maintain this intimacy with Jesus in our lives and living. And we find that centered in his sanctuary. So we are the ones who have risen up to build God's sanctuary. We are the ones building up people who are broken. We are to be the ones who are helping others mend. We are the ones who are trying to help others up. We are God's sanctuary. We are God chasers, if you will. We are the lighthouse. Therefore, the best place to maintain your relationship with Christ is in his church, not outside of it. I don't mean this to be braggadocious because that's not what I'm trying to be, but I'm sweet people. I, 
I'm going to be a local church man until God calls me home. Because this is where I have found God, discovered his best, pursue his love in my life, and chase after his will in my living. And I found it right here in the hearts of people that are doing just the same as I am. Why do I say that? Because thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. This is what David challenged Solomon to do. Rise, build. So what does this building process look like? It is to build people up. It is to build up hearts. It's to build up souls. It's to build up lives. It's to build people up with his truth. It's to build up people in his love. So let's return one last time to our text in 1 Chronicles 22, verse number 19. And bring this lesson to a much needed end. Build ye. The sanctuary of the Lord. We are the sanctuary of the Lord. Hebrew author says whose house we are. We are. We are the house of God. Not some universal invisible nothing out there floating around in some nebulous that has no real meaning attached to it in anybody's life. Every time you see the Lord's church mentioned in the Bible over 200, no, 123 times, it always refers, without exception, to a called out local visible assembly. That's what the word church in the Greek means. Not something invisible, not something untangible, not something that is unreal, but something that you can lay your heart upon and experience. And that's in a local visible assembly pursuing, ardently pursuing God's purpose for their lives, earnestly chasing after God's best with a desire, a burning desire to honor and glorify the master of our existence. And the master is Jesus. This is his master plan. This is his master purpose. Build ye the sanctuary of the Lord. Oh, I know there's more. That's why you're going to have to come back next week to find out what the more is. <laughs> but I want us to pause right here out of necessity because we are the sanctuary of the Lord. We are the house of the Lord. We are the church of Christ. We are the lighthouse. We are a people in pursuit of a purpose. We have discovered, we have discovered what that purpose is. We are a people worshiping our God here. We are a people who are in love with Jesus in this place. We are a people chasing after God's best with our hearts and souls. This is what we do. Because this is who we are. God chasers. 
Okay. And we found our purpose this day in this verse. Amen. But again, I say you'll have to come back next week to see what the ark of God pictures and what the holy vessels represent. I trust I'll see you here. Amen. Music team.